If there's uh, any other kids who want to come up, come on up. Let me get around here. So last week, do you remember I gave you homework? Anybody remember I gave you homework? All right. Hey. Okay. So what was the homework? Brady? Okay. So did you find it? Who found one? You want to tell me? Let's, here, just take that so everybody can hear, including those on the radio. Um, I helped a student put up his chair. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Who else? Okay, so we're going to go down the row here. Every day at the beginning of school, I go into the art room to help Miss Mel set up for the day. Awesome. Good job, Zoe. Okay, Maggie, we're just going to go down the row here. Go ahead. I said to my sister that I love her. Aww. Okay. I helped put up Emmy's chair on Friday. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, Anna. I helped a student do math. Very good. Anybody else? Okay. I help mom when she, when she needs help. Awesome. Good job. Good job. Okay, Caleb. I help keep my sister from crying. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you, you guys are reflecting Christ. That is very important, isn't it? Right? If we say we believe in Jesus, that we should do things that Jesus would do. And so, can you do that again this week? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. So, and then next week we can find out. Yeah. So, exactly. So, this week our topic is justice. Anybody ever heard that word before? It's not the it's not the store in the mall. Justice League. Yeah, Justice League. Okay, is that what you're going to say, Nathaniel? I didn't even think of that one, but yeah. See, I'm thinking you know grown up stuff like the Department of Justice. See, yeah. See, no one thought of that, did you? No one thought of that, right? You probably don't even know what that is. Yeah, we may not even know what that is at times, but so so. Another word for justice might be fairness. Anybody ever said, that's not fair? <laughs> did, I, did I do it right? Did I do it right? Yeah. No, not, not sassy enough. Or do I, you have to get the arms and the legs in it too, right? You say it a lot. I thought so because I saw your, your brother pointing at you. It's too whiny. Okay, so anybody ever say that whiny or not whiny, hands or no hands? Okay, so so is it is it is it fair that that Sam had to follow the choir or or that I have to follow you all after you sing a lullaby to make them all go to sleep during the sermon? What's fair? No nap time. There's no nap time on Sundays, I know. So, so how do we decide what's fair? When you say that's not fair, what are you trying to say? Okay, Brady, Brady had his hand up first. It's not even. It's not even. Ah, okay. More chocolate chips. Okay. Uh, I, I have counted chocolate chips, too. I'm with you. Okay, Zoe? Gotcha. So okay. So yeah. So not 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 sharing. Uh, not sharing. Okay. So down here, what else? What's not fair? When you want to go play and mommy says no, 
Probably daddy says no too sometimes, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, I know we could do this all the rest of church. I know we could. We could. So, so what is fair? Okay. The other and if somebody gets both of them, it won't be fair because the other person doesn't get any. Okay. So, so it like an equal distribution of goods, right? Exactly. Something like that. Okay, and Maggie. Actually take the it's fair when you share. Fair when you, hey, I like that slogan. It's fair when you share. We could probably all remember that. It even rhymes. Yeah, okay, one more. Somebody hasn't talked yet. Okay, Caleb, okay, we'll, we'll give you a shot here. they do right so if you get the bigger half do you ever give it back and say no I'll take the littler half sometimes maybe maybe if it's like a plate of broccoli or something right yeah 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 you, you, you just got to share if it has to be chocolate I'm taking both uh-huh so chocolate is a is is like a, a, a really a line in the sand here isn't it I, I'm hearing that we got chocolate chips, we got chocolate bars and sharing. And somebody got more chocolate chips and somebody got like a tiny chip. Yeah, that wouldn't be fair, would it? We got a huge chocolate chip. Ooh, nice. Okay. All right. Again, I think we could probably talk about what's fair uh, for the rest of church. And um, maybe maybe people would rather hear that than me. But, yeah. You know what? He would like that. He would like that. Yeah. Yeah, he would call that just. <laughs> All right, let's pray. All right. Yeah, so I know I know we could we could keep going, but so God uh, for your fairness, for your mercy in your fairness, for the forgiveness of our sins when we do wrong is where true fairness comes in and that you love everybody just the same. And so for all of that, we give you thanks. And all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. All right, thank you for coming up. All right, so look for, look for Jesus this week, okay? He's everywhere, I love that. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> what else needs to be said, right? Uh, I love it. All right, we got a little preacher growing up. All right, we have to nurture that, won't we? Let's, let's pray. So, God, may the, the things that I say and the things we all do make our life song sing and bring a smile to you. Amen. Well, justice has really been all over the news this week. I mean, it's incredible of how last last Labor Day weekend, Abby and I did a retreat and to plan out the the worship series for 2020. And on the uh, and it's this week that we said back in first week of September, we're going to preach on justice at our churches this week. And lo and behold, all week long. You cannot escape it. I mean, even, even yesterday, I turned on, briefly turned on the TV, and there it was once again. <sighs> anybody, anybody done with that? Some are, some aren't. Okay, well, I, I, you, you might think that I'm talking about impeachment, but I'm not, no. I'm talking about the the basket brawl game on Tuesday, right? The Sunflower Showdown. 
or, or, is it, or as I'm calling it, the second battle of Lawrence. Just as long as there's not a, a, a battle in Manhattan, I think we'll be okay, right? But right, I'm mean, all week long. I watched a game last night, and that's all they wanted to talk about was this game. I'm so done with it. By the way, WSU played two games, no punches thrown. No chairs lifted, just saying, just, just sharing. Yeah, maybe oversharing, but yeah. So, so the question for me is, did the punishments that the Big 12 and KU, you, did you notice no K-State punishments, by the way? Well, yeah, I mean, but that's from the Big 12. The Big 12 passed out the punishment to two of their, their players, uh, but, but they meted out you know, these punishments. So was this justice? Or was it just punishments? Right? I mean, they're not the same thing, are they? I mean, they're, they're connected, but, but, not, but not necessarily the same thing. Well, the word justice itself is used in the Bible 139 times. Mostly uh, with, with a word before it, uh, that, that word being perverted, as in they perverted justice, right? They didn't do justice. And so uh, it, it makes me wonder, if, is it more natural as for human behavior to not do justice than it is to do justice and to be the embodiment of justice, which would make sense, which is why we, when we reflect Christ, Christ does things in the justice sense that we would be different. As one, uh, one of the, the articles I read this week on this said, I'd rather nail jello to the wall than to give you a definition of justice. Right? That, that it's all justice itself, the word, is based upon our own experiences, on our backgrounds, on our skin colors, on our genders, on where it is that we grew up, our religious practices and beliefs, in uh, our adverse childhood experiences among many other traits and that contribute to how we view the world and thus how we view what is just or not. We could go to that other news story this week to see whether or not you thought it was just or, or just political as a way of interpreting that. So someone's justice is someone's politics. So, you know, in, in, in Colby, we hear the word justice recently connected to the word center, but it's not a building. In, in our legal system, we connect the word justice to the word criminal, but depending on who you are and how much money you have, it could be neither just or criminal, even though the behavior is the same. But in the Bible, justice is not a legal or a political term. It's an ethical term. It's a lifestyle term, if you will, to live a life of justice. And for most, most of the time frame in which the, the Bible was written, it, the, the, uh, the term, uh, or most of the t let me start, start my sentence back over. Throughout the, the time in which the Bible was written, uh, the Israelites, which would include even up to the time of, of Jesus, uh, were under a foreign power, which is unjust in its own right. But during, even during the time in which it wasn't, which would be the time during the kings or the judges, but more so the kings, the kings themselves were considered unjust. If you just scan through First and Second Kings or First and Second Chronicles, and and almost attached to almost every single king is is the the words that he died doing evil in the sight of God, something phrasing something of that nature. But even King David and Solomon, who were the greatest kings in in the monarchy did many unjust things in their own tenures as kings. 
the most damning argument made by the prophets before the exile of, of Israel into Babylon was that they had subverted justice. And as a punishment for that, God was going to send them into exile. Injustice sometimes is also how God uses the world. And God can use injustice to motivate, to invigorate, for us, for us to, to decide what is justice and what isn't justice. In fact, in, in Isaiah 53, we even have a prediction of the death of Jesus through, his, through this verse, by perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living and stricken for the transgression of my people. So maybe it all leads to the question of what does it mean to, to have justice or to be justice or to live justly through the eyes of the ministry of Jesus? Well. One sermon can't do justice to that, if you pardon the expression. But I think what we can do is glean some of the non-negotiables uh, that Jesus would, would have us uh, select, which is why I use the, the scripture of the turning of the tables uh, for today's scripture. It not, it's not only that Jesus was mad because the sacrificial system as prescribed in the law had become a transactional, uh, financial check marking of sorts rather than the relational and the freeing, the, the, uh, oh, the ability to, to be able to have access to God. It wasn't just that, although it was that. It wasn't just that the house of prayer, the house of worship of God was being turned into a cash register, although it was that as well. From a justice lens, it was that those who could afford to pay for their sacrifices, for the forgiveness that came with, sacri with the sacrifices, could do it, and those who couldn't afford it, couldn't. And there, there was no scholarshiping here. There wasn't a sliding scale. It was either you could or you couldn't. So by doing that, they left out the poor, the elderly, the widows, the orphans, and women from having access to God through, a, through a, a system essentially of a pay to pray rather than to have an open access to God which is what the, the, the law was supposed to do in the first place. It was supposed to protect the access to God from people and instead it got flipped on its side, on its ear and became a way to prevent certain people from having access to God. For a while, you could bring your own goat to sacrifice, and then it became that wasn't acceptable anymore. It had to be the goat that was available that day from the herds, which then there was money to be made and being on being one of those uh, contractors that, that did all that. Can you imagine? That equals God in some sense. So Jesus was, was angry at the injustice that was being done to a large majority of God's people. That the religious authorities of, of his era could codify who was acceptable to God and who wasn't. And the last time I checked, that's, God, that's on God, not on anyone else, right? God gets to decide that. And before he, he died, as, as the end of the scripture 
reminds us this is one of those incidences that God or, or that the uh, that the authorities used to justify crucifying Jesus and he wanted it out there before he died that those who should know that God is the God of all God loves all that God wants a relationship with all on both our inward journeys as well as our outward journeys were abusing the system for their own personal benefit and he did not like that it, it, it made him a little bit mad so biblical justice therefore starts with the idea that God desires a relationship with everyone and God abhors it when we try to short circuit things into a transaction like God is a ch the, the check mark in our lives right, to paraphrase Chief Justice John Roberts right, Jesus didn't like pedophaging that was supposed to be kind of funny okay. sometimes they just dud yeah okay all right, turning on, I'll just keep going. <laughs> turning, that's probably best, right? Okay. Turning over the tables in the temples of today might cost pastors some high dollar givers. And I've seen that happen. Or it could cost them someone who gives an extraordinary amount of time. Yet Jesus' example is to go ahead and turn those tables those unjust systems over anyway when he gave the command to follow me it was all in not just follow me when it's popular or when it's easy but probably following me means it's going to be hard today's message is a reminder that reflecting Christ means that we are called to stand up to those powerful forces in our world and to fight for what is right. And I would go so far as to say that, that if, if we do not proclaim a gospel of justice as a part of our identity to reflect Christ, we are not reflecting Christ at all. Since 1908, the uh, United Methodist Church's uh, social principles um, have been used as our guiding document to do the work of justice. This is the 2016 version of it. The first one uh, was uh, four pages. Um, this one on very fine, fine print. Um, we will need readers for this. You can set us up for that. Um, let me, let me, I won't even go to the index here just to give you an idea of 810 pages. So we've gone from four pages to 810 pages in a little bit more than a century. But we've had success in being a part of the conversation in the world as a global denomination on child labor, on public education, on women's rights, on workplace safety. And, has, and we have made substantial changes not just here, but around the globe, and that work continues. Today, the, the, uh, the way in which the social principles are, are written are in these categories of the natural world, the nurturing community, the social community, the economic community, the political community, and the world community. And you can just open it up and you'll find the work of justice. So, you know, we have, uh, there's a, uh, I just opened it up to the DREAM Act. So there's a statement on the DREAM Act uh, that the church has. Um, the United States and China political relations. There's, so whatever it is that you're looking for, uh, it's in here. It is in here. I think this church has had a history of justice, being a justice-oriented church. Right, the whole Creation Cares certification that uh, we had when we were just the Kansas West Conference, uh, we were a part of, of that, which is why we use uh, uh, the, the, the real 
plates and the real glasses uh, so that we're not adding to the landfill unnecessarily. So as uh, those who are helping with the offering come forward and our acolytes and, and Sam gets in, spot, in his spot for uh, announcements, let me close as I'm closing each of our, uh, our, our messages, our, our lessons this, in this series with a quote by Henry Nowen. Here's what he writes on, on social action. He said, the Christian life is not a life divided between times for action and times for contemplation. No real social action is a way of contemplation, and the real contemplation is the core of social action. Let's pray. God, thank you for the opportunity to be the voice of the voiceless in this community and in this state and in this country and world. It's a, it's a weighty, uh, and so we, we, we call upon your Holy Spirit to help us with that. May the offering that we receive this morning, as well as the offering that we give throughout our week through the use of our time and our talents and our abilities, also be a reflection of your work for justice. And so may you bless it and bless us to do that ministry in following you. All this in Jesus I pray. Amen. Well, the ushers are receiving this morning's offerings and tithes. Let me call your attention to some announcements. The first one is, if you have an idea who's going to win the Super Bowl, you can put your canned goods where your fandom is. Help the Genesis Food Bank in the process. Between now and next Sunday, you can place your non-perishable donations in the tub right outside the sanctuary for, you te for your team who you think will win. And the, the Chiefs are on this side of that tub out there. Um, Pastor Patrick uh, will be starting a new book study based on the Caring Congregations on Tuesday nights in February. Order your book or call the office this week to get one ordered for you. Nominations for February's Reflect Christ Award um, and recognition are now being accepted. If you know someone who reflects Christ, you can nominate him or her today by going to colbyumc.org slash reflect, reflect Christ. If you're missing a bowl, a pan, or something else um, in your kitchen, it might be here. So take a look over our stockpile in the lounge before leaving so the lost items can be found. That's all the announcements I have today. Does anyone else have anything that they want to announce? I know the youth group is meeting tonight. What time? Five o'clock here at the church. And they're going to clean the church. So even if you're not a youth and you want to come clean the church, I bet they, the youth would not mind uh, 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 some help with that. Um, so we appreciate them. And now we're going to sing uh, Bring Forth the Kingdom, number 2190, in your Faith We Sing book. 